The next design that we want to do is an edge to edge with the design uh, starting somewhere in between the top and the bottom on the far left. So we're going to our file and open and the design that I've chosen is on, I've put it on my jump drive, it's a Karen Emerson design from uh, Golden Threads and it's called Ground Cover. And so I went to my D drive and double click on that and there's this beautiful design, makes a great overall edge to edge design. But you notice that the start point is not at the top and it's not at the bottom. So it's kind of somewhere in between there. So we'll work this one together and we need to create an area first. Go to area, about an inch off the quilt, we'll do our two corner. And now sometimes if uh, you want to quilt off the top of your quilt, then you'd want to put that up. So maybe this time, maybe we want to put that up there and it will actually quilt off. I think what I'm going to do is still do it right at that point there because I'm actually going to crop so that this area right here is cropped at the top. Okay, so let's clear that out and do that again. Two corner. Again, I will move my machine to the far right so that I find the width of the area and press two corner, refresh. Now, right now it's only that width, but I know again my quilt is 45 and so I'm going to place in 45. Now my quilt's probably about 42, but I always add some extra measurement and then at the bottom, if I have to, I'll crop or just let it quilt into the batting. But right now we're gonna place this at 45. Again, refresh that and you can see, this design is six, about six and a half wide by 5.85 in height. And if I want that design to be a larger design, I can go into my resize and I can say, well, maybe I want these to be a little less dense. So I want my height to be maybe, we'll say eight inches. And I forgot to press the lock aspect ratio. See what happened? It only did the eight inches and it kept my width. But if I press that lock aspect ratio, let's undo that and lock aspect, type that in at eight, enter, and now it resized it proportionately so that it looks nice and it didn't skew it. Then another way that we could have done that rather than undo, we could have gone to reset and that would have just reset the design at its original. So now again, look at the top. The width is almost nine inches and the height is uh, almost eight inches. So I've changed the size of it and you notice how it fits within this area. We're going to go to repeat again and make it fit. Now, what's happening here is how I have all of this space between because it's, it's like it has a box between each one and I need to do a distance and I need to do a, a negative distance, so this brings this up into here. But I also see something else happening. So let's zoom in on this and do a follow, and you can see this. You can see the space between these two designs. So that tells me that I need to bring those two points together. So I'm going to press point to point, and now it brought it all together. So when we press refresh, you can see that, it's all there together. But the other thing that I'm seeing is that it didn't fill my purple box. So I want to stretch the height and stretch my width and refresh that so you can see that. Now it fits the box, but I still have an issue here. I need that distance changed. So let's zoom in on this so we can see this a little bit and let's place Maybe we'll type in some numbers and maybe put two in there and do a negative. First of all, we did that wrong. So I'm gonna point, or a negative two inches. And that looks pretty good. What if I put a negative 2.5?
So it's overlapping. You can see it right there. As we zoom in on that, you can see that's overlapping. So that um, negative 2 actually worked quite well. See how they fit in there together? That looks really nice because it matches up with the distance within the design itself. Okay, let's refresh that so we can see that. Now, I have this issue at the top that if I start this at the top of my quilt, I will have unquilted area. So I want to, to uh, crop that. I want to baseline the whole design, so I'm going to press baseline and that saves it, locks it in. And you saw different steps changing there. That's all of those steps that happened. And now it's ready to um, quilt if I wanted to quilt it. If I move it up here to the top corner, then it would actually start quilting. But look at the blank space that it's not going to get quilted, all that area. So I want to crop that off. To crop, I need to create an area to crop off. So the area right now is the area of the quilt, but I want to go to area, and I'm going to clear that area and create a new area. So clear the area, and I baselined it so it locked it in, so nothing's going to change. And now I want to probably crop about the height. If we zoom in on this, we can see that. I want to probably crop everything there off. So I'm going to go over to the top, outside the area, and do a two-point or a two-corner. Then, as I come over here, I need to go all the way over to this side. And about right here, I like that, that works good and do another two corner. So let's move this into the center so you can see. If we refresh that, if I uh, put my design out of the way, you can see that's the area box. Let's bring the design back. I want to crop that off. Let's go to crop. I want to crop that inside area out, and I want to close it so that it does a continuous stitch to the next uh, path. So I'm going to close, and I want to do an inside. There it is. It's all cropped off. Let's zoom in on that so you can see that. And there it's all cropped off, ready to go. Isn't that awesome? Okay, again, because of that, I now do not have it in the correct positioning because I've cropped that top area off. So I need to, I'm going to baseline it. Then I'm going to go to reposition. And if I move up here and say start point, I want you to be right there. And I press the start point. And there it is. Let's zoom in on that and you can see. There's the start point right there, and it's going to stitch across the quilt. Now let's check as we go across. And you can see the running stitch or the stitching line where I did the closed crop. If I bring this over to this side, you can see where that's going to stitch off to. Right there where that blue line is, where my crosshair is. That's the edge, that one inch outside. And I can see where it's going to quilt. Everything's going to be OK. There is. Now, one thing is because I cropped that area off, I've made my quilt smaller. Well, I cut two inches off of it. And I actually made my quilt five inches, well, three inches bigger. But if, I'm, if I crop too much off, I could actually go back to resize and resize that a little bit and give me that height back again. So, but for now, let's see, what's our height? Our height is 42. I said my quilt was 42. I want my quilt to be back to 45. So in the resize, I'm going to turn off the lock aspect because I don't want the width to change. I still want that to be that 41 but I want the height to be 45, so it's going to stretch it. And when you stretch uh, 3 inches over 45 inches, 
you're not going to see much of a difference in each row of the stretch. So we're going to take type 45 in there and it stretched it. Now again, let's check to see if my positioning is correct, which it is it's a little high. So I would prefer that be back down there. Again, we're going to move it down and start point and it drops that back down where it needs to be. Always check your positioning. That's the last thing you want to check before you start quilting to make sure everything is positioned correctly. Now, I like the way it is. We're ready to start quilting. So, we're going to quilt, to stitch, my tie-off starts on, my tie-off end is on, pull up, and we'll go ahead. I like the way the settings are. It disabled my motor. I can go ahead and resume. Do a tie off for that and start quilting. And you'll be able to see how it stitches along the closed crop. You see that straight lines? So now as it's moving up to that top, there will be some cropping off and it will just run a straight line across to the next area. And when you place that outside of your quilt top area, then that'll just be in your binding or off the quilt. We've finished. It's doing its tie off. Now one thing I want to point out is when I um, bring up my bobbin thread, I always give it a long tail here and then bring it back so that when I cut my thread here, this is my tail for my bobbin thread. It makes it a lot easier for me to bring up the bobbin thread, especially if I'm in an auto pull up and it moves aside and if your tail is this long you'll lose your bobbin thread. So give yourself a long tail underneath so that you have that bobbin thread to, to catch. Alright, it says long jump pause, trim your thread, press resume to, to continue, make sure a needle is up before resuming. Okay, we know that it's in the up position. Now if you don't know that it's in the up position you can actually press your half stitch. See it went down you can bring that and it comes to the full up position. So you can just check that. Now we're going to come back over here and let's do a little bit of a zoom in on this so we can see this. Now if I pressed resume it would move it over to that point but this right now I'm sure that I can get another row in here before I have to advance. But if I couldn't get another row in here, if we look, we we'll see there's our row. The next row, we could actually get a third row in here before we advance. But that fourth row, I cannot get it. Um, there's our fourth row. I wouldn't be able to stitch it. So if I had stitched the second and the third and the fourth row, or the third row, and come to the fourth, there's my position for repositioning. So if I drop my needle down and then advanced my fabric then I could go ahead and cancel and move my start point to that point and position it up at the top and go ahead and resume. So first off let's actually do, let's pretend that we don't have enough space here. So because that was a lot to take in right there. So we're going to come to this point 
and we're going to drop the needle and let's just pretend that I don't have enough space here to quilt the, that whole row. So I drop the needle and we'll advance, we'll say we advance this. So we're actually going to move it so we have to change positioning just enough so that we know we have to change and everything is stable for us. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel. So go ahead and press cancel. And what I want to do, I don't want row two, row one, because it's cropped. I need row two to stitch. So the row one was one time stitch out. Row two is going to be our stitch row now. Row three is going to be our positioning row and we'll just work down the quilt. So we need to go to uh, design and go to, actually not design, we want to go to quilt. We want to move the start point and jump past that because I canceled everything out and that moved the jump point or the start point to the to the start again. So I want to move it to the next jump and then in my design, reposition, reposition, making sure that everything is stable, start point. There is my next row to stitch and it would stitch right within that area. Okay, so from here on, row one is, was, uh, is all done. We're not going to use it anymore. Row two is my stitching row. Row three is my uh, positioning row so that when it comes back over here, I always drop my needle down where row three is, leave it, advance the fabric, and then use and cancel. You want to press the cancel and then use your reposition and reposition everything from row two. Okay, we'll just go ahead and let it start. So we're stitching row two. And it doesn't matter if I stitch row two all the way down the quilt because everything's positioned or um, everything is uh, spaced correctly. And so row two, stitch, row three, position. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this. And again, I'm going to cancel that and again show you this is, we'll just pretend that we quilted that whole row. We're going to do this again, just so that you understand that. I would take my clamps off, but I'm going to just leave them on because I'm just barely going to do a, well, first of all, before we do that, let's put our positioning needle down right there. Now, if I had advanced this, I can always go and put my needle in the start point and then do a reposition from there. So let's show you that. Say, say I advance this. It's like, oh man, I lost my positioning. How do I find my positioning? Well, if I go right to here to the start point and go to design, reposition, and say start point, it just positioned it for me. So I can always go back and find my way by going to my start point and press start point. Now I need to come down here because this is where I am want to stitch, but my start point's there. So go to quilt, new start point, and jump a row. And there we are, ready to stitch that row. And it will go ahead and stitch that row out. Okay, when the end of the day comes and your quilt's not done and you need to turn your machine off, the best thing that you need to do is save. But one of the things that I really like to do is as I'm creating the quilt, I will write down my repeats 
I will write down how much space there is between the distance between each row so that if something happens and I accidentally didn't save, the power went off, something happened during the middle of the day and I lost my design, then I have everything on a paper that I can actually go back in and recreate my whole quilt. Even the size of that area I can go back in and create. Because I can always reposition, but to create and remember maybe some of those things that I had, uh, some of the numbers that I had placed in there, sometimes you can't remember that after, a, after the day's gone on. So write those things down even though you have saved and it just helps you to remember. Because you can go on your quilt and you can get your tape measure out, but it sure is a lot easier to have it all written down. The other thing too is, is that if you don't want to use row one as a quilting row and row two as a positioning row, you can quilt down the quilt. But I have found that it just makes it really easy to use those two rows and because um, at the bottom of the quilt it doesn't matter if it just keeps going off. You don't have to quilt it all as it goes. The next thing I'd like to show you how to do is to actually crop the bottom of the quilt and off maybe one of the sides. And you can see on this quilt as we zoom in on it that you can see there is some blank area, unquilted area that maybe you don't want to have uh, unquilted. And so if I crop those areas off and then we resize again so that we get it back to our 41 by 45, then we'll be able to pl put that on the quilt. Now you can do that before you even start quilting the first row, is to crop every side off and then resize it back to your measurements. So let's go ahead and show you how to crop off the bottom of the quilt. Going to go to design and I want to get to the bottom of this quilt and so the easiest way to get to the bottom of this quilt is to put my, whoops let's not zoom out so far, is to use this button right there and now it's actually even got my area there that I could use from the area that I uh, cropped at the top. So if I want to use that area, I can use my crosshair and just grab something on there and drag it over. You see how I'm dragging it over? And now I can crop that off. So drop it. Then I will go to my crop function and I want to do a closed crop and inside of that area and now again if you look at the height 42 it's almost 43 inches so I've made it smaller again I can go back to my resize and make it back to the 45 it's still stretching it. I'm going to baseline that and let's do a zoom in on that so you can see how that looks. So I've cropped the bottom, I've cropped the top, now I need to crop the left side. So to crop the left side I'm going to reposition. Well first of all let's get rid of this area because I have to create a new area. Go to reposition and I want to get to the top so I'm going up there. See how easy that is to manipulate, to maneuver around the quilt. I went to the top and I want to crop off a little bit, maybe an inch or so. I don't, we'll see how much it is. An area. So I'm going to do two corner. And then all I need to do is just move it over maybe to that point and do two corner again. And I, it has nothing to do with the relationship with the quilt. I have created a uh, block or an area, but my area I need to put the height in and my height is 42, about 43 inches. So if I put uh, 44 maybe, that's my area. So it's created, let's refresh that, and you can see how that has, that area is, I can crop that off there. Go to crop, inside and I want to do a closed crop. So it's now cropped off the left side. I could, if I wanted to, is to reposition and bring the quilt over to this side and 
let's see, where's my crosshair? I'm going to take, grab part of that and bring it up and over into that area, up at the top, drop it, go to crop, do a closed with an inside and it's cropped it off, baseline it, make sure that's baselined. Now I've made this smaller and I may need to resize my whole quilt to get it back to the size that I needed. But I can do that by going to resize and changing my height. Put my height at 45 again. And my width is 41 and I'm ready to go. Once I've cropped it, it'll make it smaller on both sides and on the bottom and the top. Then what you need to do is go to the resize menu and resize it to your original measurements, which ours was 41 by 45. Sometimes you'll have areas on your quilt that you won't want to stitch across if you're doing an edge to edge. You want to actually crop out that star and maybe uh, define it with some straight stitching in it. So we want to crop each one of those stars as we go across the row. Other times you'll have appliques or um, machine embroidery that you'll want to not stitch over. So we need to crop those areas out. Now this one, if we go back to this star, you can see this star is very straight lines and so I can do point, 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 and using my multi-point and create an area that's very linear, very straight. But when we look at these flowers, and I, if I want that to be very accurate, I've got to do a lot of multi-points with that. So we are going to, we've positioned our design so that as it stitches across here, at this point it will just stitch right over it. So I've got my positioning of the design correct, but now I need to create an area to crop out. So we're going to area, and we're going to use the multi-point. So I'm going to start here in a corner, right there, and press multi-point. And then as I come up here, I'm going to do very close multi-point around this. And it may take some time so that you can, the, the more accurate or the round you want your curves, the more multi-points you're going to push. So if I, just for an example, I'm going to do less on this. So two on the, just to get through there, so that's going to be very straight. This next one I'm going to do a lot get into my little point there. Now if you forget where you started, you can actually close uh, the design out. Let's zoom in on this, follow, and you can see I started right there is a, and it's really hard to see, but there's a, a little a bigger dot right there where I um, started that. Let's open that up so we can see the design. Now my crop is already on and I have an open crop so you can see as this stitches it would, the design itself would stitch around there and so that's where it's going to jump to. It's going to jump up there, it's going to come up and then the next row will do this and that there's jumps across. If I don't want it to do the jumps, then I can do a closed crop and it will actually do stitching. Let's get rid of the box and you can see where it follows and stitches along there. So it's going to create a stitching line. The other thing that you can do if you like that to stitch around, we can go to our um, not our freehand, our quilt, 
and trace outline and you can actually stitch the area of that box or the, the area that it created so that if it stitches a little bit of it and you say, well, that's not good enough, then come back here and create and stitch that area. Okay, let's go back to our design into our crop and I've created that and I want to do an, op uh, an open crop. So I've got this area cropped. Now what I want to do is baseline it and it's going to freeze it or set it. Then I need to go create the area over here. So I'm going to area and clear that area and it's cropped. So if I zoom in on that you can see that area will not stitch over. Then I can come over to my flower here and again create a new area with my multi-point. So pressing and you can see as I've zoomed in on that you can totally see it's going to take away that leaf. So if I did further away it's going to be a straight. Now that might not be an issue if I did the open crop. Go back to our crop and do an inside with an open and as I look here that was an issue because it's going to stitch over that. So you definitely want to make sure that you crop uh, exactly the way you want it so that it will crop nice and circular or if you have a star it'll take those points. We can do a closed crop on that and that's the way it will stitch around that. Again, baseline that. Now you have two crops. If you have more flowers across that you want to crop out, it's baselined. You'll delete your area and then you'll create a new area in your, where your other flower is or your other design that you want to crop.